Hey everyone, it's your Sam and I'm here with another video. Today I want to kind of go over overused words. If you have read your own work before, then you kind of know what words you tend to overuse, especially if you've kind of done a spot of editing or two on your work and you just kind of know. Another thing that you can do is take the reports from Grammarly or Pro Writing Aid or something like that to search which words are overused in a piece of document. Here I have the first chapter of I'm No Hero. I've done maybe one or two edits on it. Not very thorough with it or anything like that because I just haven't delved into it that deep. I'm still transcribing a lot of this but I still wanted to kind of see where I was at with the overusage of some words. One of the words I know I overuse is the word that. So what I want to do is I want to go up here to edit. This is in Google Docs. You can also do this in Word. Go to find and replace. And as you can see, I've already typed in the word that. I have 37 uses of the word that in a 14 page document. That's a little excessive. <laughs> Whenever you do this search like that, it will pop up and highlight the word that you search for. So you can always go and read the sentence. So this one right here is one of the first ones out of the 15 to 37 because I did a little bit of editing before this just to make sure that I was doing it correctly before I popped on to this video. <laughs> so here's the phrases. I know his voice was soft. Mama always told me that first loves are hardly the lasting lifetime ones. This right here is someone speaking. And with that, I kind of take it as a grain of salt. I want to make sure that this is the voice of the character, that this is how the character would speak normally. And I do believe that Eddie would use the word that in this sentence. So I'm going to leave it. I'm going to go to the next one. That don't mean you and Johnny won't last though. Even when he goes off to be the hero, he'll take you along with him. He always said he would. Said he wouldn't take down the big ones without you. This is Eddie again. And again, I think that he would use the word that in this instance because he's talking about first love and how Basically, the whole town thinks that Chi and Johnny are first loves. Go to the next one. Again, it's Eddie. Eddie chuckled. You both did a number on that boar, but Johnny did give the kill and blow. Again, I think it's all right. So, this is a continuation in the conversation. This is Chi, this is Eddie, this is Chi. Is that what he said? She would use that. Didn't have to. Part of that eyeball was still on him. So right here, I think instead of that, I'm going to put D, even though it is Eddie, but yeah. Go to the next one. My insides and face heated. That had been my dagger in that eye, not his. Replace that with it and its. So there it takes down two more of that, and I'm now down to 34 and a 14 page spread. Now, you don't have to do this for every single word that you overuse, but it is a good thing just so readers like me who pay attention to verbiage <laughs> don't start getting pulled out of the book and counting how many that's there are on a page. I've done that. It wasn't necessarily the word that, but it was the word succinct I do believe. It was a non-fiction book and the writer used the word succinct like every other sentence <laughs> and it just pulled me out of what I was reading. I was having a difficulty a bit of difficulty reading it anyway because it was a non-fiction book and non-fiction books are boring so you really want to try to keep your reader in books that are relatively boring. The fact that the word succinct was used in every other sentence just drove me insane and I DNF the book even though it probably could have helped me. I do believe it was like a, 
a business, how to run your own business kind of thing or something like that. Now there are some things that Word or Google Docs or Grammarly or something like that will catch on their own, but you can always do pro writing aid and do like an improved document and it will take a little while for it to pull up even with something as small as like a 14 page spread. So if you have a whole book that's well over 500 pages like I do, I would go chapter by chapter with this thing because as you can see, it's still populating the report as we are speaking and it takes a while. And this right here is just some of the grammar and style issues that they found in a 14 page spread. There is overused terms right here. And another thing that you should look up is words like feel, felt, feels, something like that. Because whenever you use the words feel or felt, then you know that you're telling instead of showing. So I did the whole find and replace. There are five instances of the word feel in my 14 page document here. And here we are. Here's the first one or second one. Where is the first one? I gritted my teeth wondering what this dread was curling in my stomach and making my fingers itch for my da daggers. Couldn't he feel it? This is a thought. So it's not really telling it since it's a thought. I'm going to go to next. I could feel the coolness of his skin as his hands came to rest on my waist again. So light, like feathers resting there instead of fingertips and palms. Instead of doing this, I could change the sentence to the coolness of his skin as his hands came to rest on my waist again it sent shivers up my spine or made me feel the goosebumps rise or something like that. So that's a way that you can change that sentence because technically this is a bit of telling right here. And if you don't want to change it, I mean, you can leave it because like I said, there's only five instances in 14 page spread, which I think is fairly good. Uh, it's okay. So instead of changing this right now, I am going to go to the next one to see if I can change this one. I could feel every muscle aching to do just that again. I can change this sentence here and I like the idea of changing this sentence rather than the other one because I kind of like the other one the way it's like set up. I'm actually just going to take that sentence out because after reading the rest of the paragraph it's just better without it. I wanted to take a step back. I needed to make myself smaller not a threat like I had been taught all my life to do against a bear or a big carnivorous beast. This is a bit of dialogue right here but then we go into thoughts. I pressed my hands up onto that larger than life chest, feeling both sets of lungs working under my palms. This right here, I'm not going to change again. We have four instances of feel and honestly, this is feelings. Um, I went to my uncles to, to figure out my thoughts and feelings, my, what I need to do. This is dialogue. So I'm not going to change that either. And that's all the uses of, Feel. I'm going to close that out and as you can see that's kind of how you can use the find and replace tool um, if you don't want to pay for something like Grammarly or Pro Writing Aid or something like that and you can do this before you hand it to your beta readers or even after just do it kind of before you send it to a professional editor or you start querying. Another thing that you can do is you can kind of read through your things with the intent of seeing how much repetitive, how many repetitive words are in there. Again, in something like a, a battle or a bit of dialogue where characters are kind of going back and forth and maybe they're talking about their feelings, there's going to be a lot of feel words in there. 
So use, just, just kind of use your brain. <laughs> kind of, kind of see what fits, kind of see what you can change around. Keep a thesaurus next to you to see if you can change up any of the words. I wouldn't use any of the, you know, million dollar words kind of because you want to keep your readers in your book <laughs> instead of pulling them out so that they have to run to a dictionary and pull it out and see what that word means. That's just a, a little bit of kind of an editing process that I'm toying with every now and then. I am still transcribing so I haven't really delved into this editing process all that well or all that much but I have done little things here and there just to try to alleviate some of the boredom that I have of rewriting my, or typing up my handwriting I should say. <laughs> Alleviating boredom by doing find and replace and seeing what words are repetitive and doing a bunch of rereads. Woohoo! So that is about all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this little peek into the I'm No Hero world and reading a little bit along with me. And I will see you in the next video. I post videos every Sunday and Thursday. They're usually on writing related content or creative content or just something that I fancy doing a video on for the time being. I do live streams every Thursday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So come and join me if you want to get some productivity done during our little 20 minute sprints. I'll be happy to have you and we can do little chats in between each sprint on what we're working on and pass some ideas back and forth and all that good stuff. As always, be kind to one another, smile about something today, and keep being creative and keep writing and reading. I'll see you next time.